them out. You know, they can't even sleep, they can't even think, they can't even eat. You understand me? And especially when it comes to anything that has to do with money, it's like you have a crazy. You understand me? But when it is settled, there is such contentment. There is just so much peace within you. You understand me? You know, is your account settled? That's where my joy comes from this morning, knowing that my account was settled by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, mighty God. We're just going to pray right now. And, you know, I just want us, you know, you know, if you didn't do it this week, just, you know, pray a prayer of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Let's just pray a prayer of thanksgiving this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God, my old account was set up.
it is good to be alive and it is good to be in church. Amen. And I want to welcome the Spirit of God and I want to welcome everyone to the house of God this morning. Amen. It is truly a privilege to worship God. You know, I look at it and right now there are some people you know, even some apostolic people, there are some people in the Ukraine who probably they're afraid to go to church right now because they're under the threat of an attack from Russia. Amen. But we could freely leave from all parts of the city, amen, or the island, and we could come to this place and we're not worried about any missiles coming into this building, amen. It is a privilege to be able to freely come and to freely worship God. And to me, that is something to thank God for. I want to tell some people that Jamaica is a God-blessed country. Don't make anybody tell you anything. Amen. And those who have traveled, but around you will tell you, there's nowhere like Jamaica. I've been to different countries, different continents. And no matter what they want to say about Jamaica, and people are far near all kind of thing, and so much killing and whatever, Jamaica is a God-blessed country. And it is one of the best places to live on earth. And it's one thing I thank God. I thank God that I'm a Jamaica. And I thank God. Amen. Bless God. That you know, I live in a place where have the freedom to worship. Amen. God in spirit and in truth. Bless the Lord. So, I want to take this time to welcome some special people in our midst. So, first time visitors. There are other visitors here. And it's not your first time. But, you know, we want to acknowledge those who are putting their feet, amen, in, in faith, majestic temple for the very first time, amen. And so firstly, when I call your name, I'd like you to stand, amen. We have visiting from Rima, invited by Sister Burr, uh, Yanni Kaur, amen. So give our hand, everybody, amen. Welcome, Yanni, good to have you. And Yanni was here in Sunday school, amen, throughout the time. And so, you know, feel free to worship with us and, and, and ensure you leave with the blessing that God has in store for you. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. And also we have um, Mr. Allington Edwards. Amen. Give him a hand to the Lord. Bless the Lord. So, when you as well, and he was invited by Brother Randy, it is good to have you. Amen. Bless God. It is good to have you. You know, I'm going to do something that I don't normally do. I feel like praying for both our visitors. Can I ask you to stand here? And can I ask you, um, Mr. Edwards, to just come here. Amen. Come, Deacon, lay hands on him. Come, Sister King, lay hands on her. We're just going to pray for them. And, and we're going to pray for Mr. Edwards. Um, he is not well. You know, I've heard that he is not well. Amen. So we want to pray for him because we serve a God who is a healer, who is a deliverer. You know, I don't know your needs. If you have any needs, but we we'll pray for you. Amen. You have a lot. Amen. But you know what? God is the solution to all your problems. Believe it or not. Amen. Amen. God bless. Amen. We serve a healing God. So we're going to pray and you can lay hands on them. Amen. Bless God. And let us pray. Lord Jesus, we cry out to you because you are the healer. You are the deliverer. Lord Jesus, you are the one. And I remember the times when I was sick and I had no money and I called upon you, Jesus. Hallelujah, you delivered me. I remember the times when I was in trouble, Lord God, and I had no one to turn to and I called upon you, Lord Jesus, and you healed and you delivered. I remember the time when I had needs, hallelujah, needs that I could not meet. And I cried out to you, and oh God, you heard my voice, and you delivered me out of all my fears. And so I come to you today, confident that you are the God who answers prayers. You are the all-powerful God, the omnipotent one. And so we come before you, believing we serve the Almighty God, and there is nothing too hard for you. And so I come before you, and you core, Lord Jesus, you know our problems, you know our fears, you know all that she's going but oh God, help her to recognize that we have seen all our tears and we have heard all our cries. And so right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray for deliverance. I pray, oh God, that you'll find the solution in you because no one can heal like you. No one can touch like you. No one can deliver like you. And so, Lord God, deliver her. 
Christ, oh God, that you may deal with all our situations. I pray, Lord God, for Alita and Edwards, John, right now, touch him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. You know what's happening in his body. Oh Lord Jesus, you are Jehovah Rapha. Oh God, you are the healer. Lord Jesus, and oh God, I pray that you touch him, Lord God, even right now as his feet is. Oh God, I pray and renew the sickness and renew the disease that is in his body. And I pray that you set him free right now. Confirm the doctors. Healing in the name of Jesus Christ. We decree and declare healing because we have power over sickness and disease and over the power of the enemy. Lord God, I put these two people before you and you put them there for a purpose. And I pray today for the salvation of their soul. Set them free right now. Set them free right now. In the name of Jesus we pray. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Can somebody praise the Lord? Hallelujah, yes, lift your hands up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, we thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, thank God, you may be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is an apostolic service. I want to go by the program. What does God's spirit lead? If God said turn right, we turn right. We can go left, we go left. Hallelujah, bless God. That's how it is. Amen. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. And so, let me just quickly give you the announcements. Amen. This week, we continue with, amen, our services online on Tuesday with prayer meeting. And it starts at 7 and that's on Zoom and you can get the link and you can join. Uh, Sister Valor can share the link with you. You know, and you come on, amen. And, um, you know, Edwards, Brother Randy can share it with you. And, you know, we invite you, we invite everybody to come on to pray with us, amen. Can I tell you, it's prayer that Jamaica needs. That's what's going to solve the problem. Our solution is in prayer, amen. Locking your is not going to solve the problem, amen. Bless God, and, and, and no matter what, you know, complaining. And, and going to the politician can't solve your problem. Only Jesus can solve our problem. Let me tell you that. Amen. And so we need to pray. We need to pray and not to grow weary. That's what the Bible says. And then on Wednesday we have Bible study. It is a new, we started with a new series, a new teacher. So pretty much from there I'll be teaching a new topic from Wednesday. Probably for the next two weeks. Amen. Bless God. And uh, we want God's will to be done. And then Thursday it is? Sunday. Amen. And by the way, on Wednesday, on Wednesday, it is our day of prayer and fasting. So, what I encourage everybody on Wednesday, try your best and fast, you know. Fast those children, adults, even visitors, if you want to join us, fast. And, and one of the things we pray for when we fast, we pray for our country, you know. I know a lot of people get fear because the crime city getting out of hand, the killing getting out of hand. But you know, we believe that if they were not praying people in Jamaica, things would be worse. You know, people don't say anything yet. And people recognize how bad things can get when the rapture comes and, 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 the, and the people of God are taken out. Then they realize how bad things can get. So nonetheless, I just want to remember, encourage everybody to fast on Wednesday. Pray and fast on Wednesday. And as we pray and fast, let us pray for our nation, for Jamaica. You know, we live here, so you know, you know, so we have to make sure we have to start out. You know, we pray for our communities. You know, I, I don't know what people in Canada want or in America or whatever. Amen. This is where we live. And, you know, we have to push back. Amen. I, I don't think that um, Christians must be in Jamaica and demons are around the place. You know, I start looking at it and I start here. I said, demons should not run the place over there somewhere. You know? <laughs> we must run this. Amen. Because we're the salt of the earth. We're the light of the world. Amen. And light dispel darkness and salt. You know, food is never the same without salt. No matter what ingredient, if salt is not there, we have to know it. Amen. Bless God. We know it if salt is not there. And so, um, but we must use too much salt. We must use too much salt. You know? We must use too much salt. We must. Because there's a little bit of salt, you know. I'm okay. There's a little bit of salt, you know. There's a cut of salt. The whole pot. <laughs> you know? Um, 
So we must make a difference. And, and, and we're going to have to move it to the next level. Just want to tell you from now that our first week of, of we started going out in the community and you know the first Saturday in Roman we'll be going out, going back on Saturday coming. So pretty much for that effort. Amen. Not this Saturday, the following Saturday, the still in front of Amen. Let's go. That's pretty much about that. And uh, there are some things, you know, that I don't want to, well, let me just finish the week's announcement. Then we'll talk. Uh, so Thursday is Farm Depth. And the preacher public is for his 10 minutes, read a scripture, etc. And then on Friday, it is Women of Faith. Is that Women of Faith? Eh? Last Friday? Was it last Friday service? Okay, so Friday coming is the last Friday? Yeah, man. So it's Women of Faith right here. Thank you. It's Women of Faith. All in a book, but I'm too Total blues dead sister for him. So we're coming up this right there. And we want to pray much for that. Um, one final thing I'll say. You know, <laughs> um, we are we're a small church. But a lot of people seem to I get calls all the way, even from other pastors and I said, boy. I see people doing well, they're teaching that, they're studying, they're doing this, that, you know, all the white people. I don't know if you could think of a lot of people, but I've been getting requests for help. Majestic to send people, send people to help, send people to help, you know, I've been getting requests. Can you imagine? I'm oh, so small. And, you know, I've been resisting. You know, I said, please, that's all of us, you know, um, but we have to, we have to start. You know, every now and then we have to start something. And uh, so every now and then I, I went up the other day, but you know, we have some good men and women who probably from time to time will have to go to minister. So it starts. So next week, um, you know, next week, you'd be in Sunday school, but after next week, they come on with the to minister at church. As they have asked for help. So I'm going to say, hey. So pre prepare yourself to take the minister as you yeah, yeah, prepare yourself, you know, so prepare words. It's a time to prepare word. You can have a time that somebody called and I said, it's a time to come with us all. So, amen. So, <laughs> so pretty much for um, the club, you know, just letting you know that from now, you know, not keeping the secret so you pray for it. It's not next week, it's week after next. It's week after next week. So, amen. Uh, next week, I'll be going somewhere. And week after next week. So, uh, those are the announcements. Amen. Those are the announcements. Have I forgotten anything, leaders? Have I forgotten anything? Okay. Uh, go. Amen. All right. So, God bless you all. You know, worship God. Do your best to worship Him and to give Him everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Let your hallelujahs roll. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let those hallelujahs
brother Simon just to come and to share their testimony. We got the devil in the room.
now we're just going to uh, call our preacher for today. Hallelujah. Sister Georgia. And I'm going to call Pastor King and Deacon Murray. In the week, spoke to me and said, Mr. Ding, you know, 
somebody from a Catholic girl is a Christian, or somebody from another church where she is in the States, somebody with the gift of knowledge or whatever, somebody spoke to her and said to her, you were planning to get married the other day and didn't. It is a good thing if the will of God because it would have been disaster. And the person went on to tell her about some things that happened in her past, in her father recently dying and all that. Some things that the person would know. Amen. And then some other things came to light that other people were saying. And I'm like, you know, God, there's no way on God's earth I could know. I don't know. I don't know the man. I said the lady a few times. So they asked me to do marriage counseling. Can you imagine them set them date, them a biop stuff, them pay down, and then come before this little, this little brother come tell them, say, no, you must get married. But she was obedient and put it off. And I believe that her life was spared. Amen. Because the lady tell her something that God from me, God said to me, and God said, this man is going to be here. Amen. And can I tell you, it is better not to get married than to make the wrong decision. You know, probably I'm talking to somebody, marriage is one of the most important decisions you're going to make. But nonetheless, my focus is prayer. And so, as you go, not just as I lead as a pastor, I have to pray. But in every decision I make, and in every decision you make, I want to tell you, pray, 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 Sister Marsha. Pray and don't stop praying. And when you pray and God talk to you and tell you, accept it. Don't try and seek another answer. Amen. You don't understand. I never had all the details. But they're coming after the fact. And then people start calling me and thank me. If not, brother, I said, boy, you know, Mr. Think so and so. So initially I felt like the villain. But afterwards, it showed me. I never know everything. But when we pray, we pray for all powerful God. We know everything. And it will help you to make the right decision. Can I tell somebody, don't make any decision like you. You might be angry. You might be sad. You might think something is the best for you. But whatever it is you need to do, pray. And when you consult God, amen, he will direct you. Don't lean on your own understanding. Just acknowledge him. Just talk to him. And God will direct your path in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, Lord, I Let's testify to me. You should testify about praying, praying at all costs. And uh, I want to say to us today that prayer, prayer works. Prayer is me. And uh, as a child of God, I believe why I stand here today is because of prayer. And why I say it's because of prayer, it's because of maybe a family prayer, person that has been in the faith prayer, the saints prayer, why I'm standing here. And I'm just want to encourage each and every one that pray not all costs. We should pray at all costs. Why I say this throughout my Christian life, at times I fall in situations that seems like there is no way out. But I know, I'm not going to say I remember, I know that there is a God that I can cry out to because He's bigger than my problem. He, he has the answer for my problem. And I have found out through the, through the years that guess what? I can carry out to this God. Whatsoever the situation may be, whatsoever the situation, oh, person may see the situation, you can carry out to this God. And early in my Christian work, when I just got saved, and I testify about it many of times. I was at a point where I wasn't working. Things were so difficult in my life. But at the end of the day, I was so faithful to prayer meeting in the morning at faith chapel. I made that dedication 
not a guess one. I read a walk from Washington Garden was straight a boulevard a morning time. Just to pray. Not just for myself, but to cry out on behalf of others. And guess what? It is important that we can make that sacrifice and that dedication, hallelujah, as it relates to prayer and doing the will of God. Because God commanded us as child of God to pray. So I'm encouraging someone, whatsoever situation you are, don't give up. Don't cease to pray. Continue praying. Because at the end of the day, God is there listening. So God bless you. Thank you, Pastor King. And Oh Jesus, right now, great God, we humble oh God ourselves before you. Lord Jesus, right now, our sister, oh God, stand, oh God, in the midst of your people. Lord Jesus, great God, I pray that you rest, oh God, your hands upon her. Lord Jesus, I pray, oh God, that you touch my God her lips, touch her thoughts, Lord God, touch her mind. Lord Jesus, as she speak, Lord God, your word. Lord God, I pray, Lord, that your word, Lord God, will fill upon good ground. And I pray, O oh God, that your words, Lord God, will, O oh God, first journey and bring forth much fruit. Lord Jesus, right now, touch the heart, O oh God, who will hear your word. And I pray, O oh God, for a transformation, Lord God. We pray, O oh God, for salvation. We pray for a deliverance. And we pray for our healing right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord Jesus, let your will be done, O oh God, here on earth, as it is in heaven. Lord, speak to her right now, and let your perfect and divine will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. So I'm reading from Ephesians 6, verse 18. It's Ephesians 6, verse 16 to 18. And I'm reading the New King James Version. And it reads, Above all, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked one. And take the element of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Being watchful to, the, to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And I would like to entitle this sermon, Pray at All Costs. So first we're going to look at what is prayer, and then we're going to look at the term, what all costs really means. So prayer, according to my Sunday school notes, prayer is a two-way communication between God and man. It is man's ultimate indication of trusting God, and also it is a development of a relationship with God. And the term at all costs means, you know, according to the Oxford UK Dictionary, at all costs means regardless of the price to be paid or the effort needed. So that's what all costs means. Ian Barnes once said, nothing is well done without prayer for the simple reason that is leaves God out of the account. You know, as Christians, we should always stay connected to God and keep Him in power at all times. And why should we pray? Um, Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 to 18 says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. So we pray because it is the will of God for us. You know, it is God's will for us to always have an healthy relationship. And I believe that, you know, Pastor King gave um, the couples the right answer because he knew the will of God and because he prayed. And through that, he was able to be honest with them despite them probably at the time not accepting it. But God's will was done. And, you know, as we know, as he testified through prayer, he was able to do what God had asked him to do. You know, we pray because our Lord to stay in communication with God. 
you know, it's, it's shown that God, you know, we pray because, you know, we want to keep God involved. You know, if we pray to help us to avoid getting into temptation or giving in to temptation. Matthew 26, 21 says, Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. With prayer, we can overcome temptation. You know, that, and those are the benefits of prayer. You know, and there are great benefits. Prayer gives us really good benefits. We should pray to experience the power of prayer and to experience the faithfulness of God. We need to pray at all costs. And I can testify about praying at all costs. And I can testify about the power of God and trusting in God. You know, even when I don't know how things are going to go, and I'm going to testify again. You know, when I just started second year of college, I don't know where the money's going to come from. You know, I got a sum of money from my sister. You know, it, did it. it wasn't going to cover, but it helped. And, you know, I remember it was the second week, I think the second week in school, you know, everybody's being registered. I'm not being registered because I don't pay all my money. I remember when I called my school and they said that I would have to pay off, you know, the money for me to um, register. Long story short, you know, I have a friend and she called me one day and she was praying for me. And she said that, Georgia, you should not worry about your tuition, but you just need to pray. And honestly, when I was praying, not even prayer, I was just praying. I was crying to God and said, God, you need to pray for me. And long story short, I received three grants in one academic year, all because of prayer. You know, so I can testify about praying at all costs, even though I don't know where the money is going to come from. I don't know when or where it's going to come from, but praying, you know, even though I was crying and I was upset and I was sad and I was hurt, you know, I prayed at all costs, even, you know, through crying. So we need to pray at all costs, even if we don't know how things are going to go. We need to pray at all costs, even when we don't know where the money is going to come from. You know, we don't know about the when and the hours and the where and the where. You know, we still need to pray at all costs. We need to pray at all costs because I know that each and every one of us, you know, have experienced the power of prayer. You know, the benefit that it gives and the faithfulness of God. We need to pray at all costs. First Timothy 2, verse 1, read, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplication, prayers, intercession, and giving thanks be made for all men. The church cannot be guilty of prayerlessness. You know, what I was writing is at first, you know, even during the sermon, I was like, God, really, I have something else. And I was like, no, you need to stick to this. And you know, when he said this to me, the church cannot be guilty of prayerlessness. When, when there's so much, so many things going on in the world, and there's so many things going on in Jamaica, you know, when there's so much stuff to pray about, when there's always something to pray about, the church cannot be guilty of prayerlessness. You know, when we have a generation of young people to save and impact, the church cannot be guilty of prayerlessness when Jamaica is acting as if there is no love and every single day there is murders and murders and pop-up murders and, and, and killing and pop-up killings, you know, where there's always fight. The church cannot be guilty of prayerlessness when the Bible clearly states, you know, my own shall be called a house of prayer. The church cannot be guilty of prayerlessness, you know, when God says we should pray at all times. And I'm telling you what the Bible says, the church cannot be guilty of prayerlessness when we have a generation of young people to impact and to save. The church cannot be guilty of prayerlessness when we have our family members and friends and society and the nation and the world to save from going to the devil. So yeah, the church cannot be guilty of prayerlessness when the Bible tells us to pray without season. You know, one way to overcome prayerlessness if you're experiencing it is to always look at the reward of prayer and all its benefits. You know, even if it seems like nothing is happening when we're praying for our family members, and even if they're going to block us, you know, demolish us, and ask for things, even if we always tell the truth, pray at all costs. Even if it seems like we're doing things in vain, we must always pray, pray at all costs. Even if we don't know what to pray about, not knowing what to pray about, I think, 
can be a prayer. I think we can go to God and say, God, I don't know what to pray about. Tell me what to pray about. And that's just a simple prayer. I mean, God can lead us what to pray about. You know, there are times when I don't know what to pray about and I will, you know, always just stay and ask them if they have prayer requests. I will, you know, ask my classmates if they want me to pray about something. You know, because I want to pray about all of us. Even if I don't know what to pray about, I am going to go to God and tell him that I don't know what to pray about. Go to God and tell him that you don't know what to pray about. If you think you have nothing to pray about, he gave us his word. And I think that the word is the best thing that we could ever pray. Pray the word and ask for prayer, prayer requests. You know, we still, you know, and also you can even pray what's going on in the news, you know. That's a good thing to pray about as well. As long as we live in this world, there's always something to pray about. You know, we still have people who believe in their free God. You know, the other day I was in um, Stony Hill, you know, with my co-workers and I, and you know, there's this presentator, presentator, <laughs> presenter, thank <laughs> you. And she was presenting you know, to the girls, the first post girls day, and she was talking about the Trinity, and I was like, you know, I first of all, you people, like, like being the same with somebody that believe in Trinity, you know, all my friend, my girl, we look at, you know, we look at each other, and I was like, what? What's this? She she's saying more girls, you know, and you know, we need that something that we need to pray about, you know, because we still have people who believe that there is three God, but the Bible tells us, you know, it's, it's one. We still have people who claim to be keeping the Sabbath, you know, that's something to be praying, to pray about. We need to pray at all costs, you know, because we have souls who win forever. You know, we should not treat prayer as a suggestion, but it's something that we should always do because it's something that's very important. You know, even the devil know this. A lot of benefits derive from prayer. And that's why the devil don't want us to pray. He know that there's benefits when we pray. He even know about the power of prayer. You know, there are times that he will, you know, he will try to stop us or to disrupt, you know, our prayer time, you know, a lot of time. I don't know about you, but a lot of time when I'm praying and then that's the time I get a message. Or that's the time somebody chooses to call me. You know, the devil will try literally anything you know, to stop us from praying. And I want to remind us that, you know, the day we stop praying, that's the day that we're going to die. That's the day that we're going to die spiritually. I, I, I think about, you know, people that, you know, get saved, we feel the Holy Ghost, and then it goes backslide. I know, I think, you know, the first thing before they backslide is to stop praying. So people stop praying and then afterwards, you know, they die. We need to pray at all costs. You know, pray at all costs. The devil, you know, he's doing his work and he's coming. We must pray at all costs because the devil is moving and we need to move on the ball with prayer at all times. We need to pray at all costs because the devil is going around seeking who we may devour. First Peter 5 verse 8 says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary devil as a roaring lion is walking about seeking who we may devour. You know, the moment we stop praying, that's the time the devil is going to sneak up. Because I'm telling you, even when you're praying, he's there. So imagine the time that you are not praying. He's going to want to, you know, take you over. And as a Christian, you know, as a Christian, I think a Christian, you know, who pray, will not last, and we have all witnessed that. A Christian who doesn't pray is powerless. A Christian, as Christians, you know, we must value the power of prayer and pray at all costs. And a Christian who doesn't, who doesn't pray lacks spiritual discipline and needs help. You know, pray at all costs. You know, and also one thing when I was writing this and God said to me, you know, prayer requires action. Fire requires action. And at first he said, pray, fire, prayer without action is, and I was like, is what? And, you know, for two days I was, you know, trying to say, prayer without action is what? And he said, prayer without action is dead. And then he said, I'm comparing to, to faith, faith without action, faith without works is dead. Prayer without action is dead. You know, oftentimes we would pray, we say, God, send this and send that. Present, you know, we are not even witnessing to our, to our class 
classmates or our co-workers, you know, or even people, to, people on the street, you know, prayer requires action. So if we are going to tell God that, God, I want you to save Rostow, where are the laborers, where are the, where are the people that's going to go to make sure that the souls are going to be saved? We need to pray and act on it. We cannot just pray and act on it. Whenever we pray, we must act on it. Don't just use prayer to ignore the need for action. We need to pray with action, you know, because I believe they go hand in hand. A lot of times, you know, we want God to do things for us and we are not praying. You know, we are not giving our, our full attention to it. We are not giving the action. We are just praying and just letting it stay. Putting in the action is always needed. Pray with all action. Prayer without, prayer without action is like asking God you know, to guide my footsteps and you're not willing to move. It's like telling God, God, I want to work and you are not, and, and you are not, you, you know, apply for the work as yet. You know, all the people don't know you. Take them and just take up their phone and just have it like that. You need to pray and, you know, I it. Send in your resume. God, I need this, I need that. And I can testify about that. You know, there are times when I was still in college. And, you know, my friends know because we are that close, my college friends. You know, all of them, you know, do something else to get free their money. And, you know, there are times that they will send me and say, George, you need to apply for this. I need to apply for that. You know, and, and there are friends that I would always say, George, I'm going to pray about it. I want to pray about that. I love those friends. You know, I can always pray. You know, do not ask God to guide your footsteps if you are not willing to move your foot or your feet. Do not ask God to do things for you if you are not willing to do it. You know, it's like asking God for something and you're not willing to, to, to actually do it. Yes, it makes no sense. You can't ask God for something you're not willing to, you know, to do it. A true commitment to prayer will bring great rewards. Nothing will stop us from being committed to God if we are truly giving in to prayer. A true commitment to prayer is what's going to make us stay in the will of God. And I think pastor can testify about that and they can testify about that as well because they were committed to prayer. Even if they have to disappoint somebody, the will of God was done and you know, they did it at all costs. Pray even when it gets hard. Be prayerful, be, be alert, stay in the will of God. With prayer, you can stay in the will of God. Pray, 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 and pray. And I know that there are times that, you know, we struggle. We really struggle with prayer. And I get that, because I can relate to it. But if we allow it to become an habit, you know, if we allow it to become, if, well, let me rephrase that. If we allow it to become an habit, it's not going to be hard if we continue to pray. Even setting reminders will help you to pray at all costs. You know, I, I think the, I think Brother Diane uh, was saying something a couple of months or weeks back. But he said he would not set reminders on his phone. You know, and I think I think that very, I don't know if it was a Bible study or, or he was preaching, but I did what he he did something and I followed. And he said that to set reminders on his phone. And I'm a tendency, I'm being honest. The first thing I took off in the morning is my phone. So on my phone screen, you know, I, um, I got I got something from Google and it says but did you pray first? That's my reminder. You know, even, even if I'm going to take up my phone, it's going to remind me if, you know, did I pray first before I do anything on this device. So praying at all costs. You know, even on busy, busy days, you know, I think that we should at least find the time to pray. You know, God, when, you know, in the Bible, we, we, we know that. I don't remember the story, but I know that God, Jesus, stayed away to pray. Even if it just takes like five minutes, away from our busy schedule just to pray and just to tell God thanks, you know, it is, you know, that small effort is appreciated. I think we appreciate that, you know, you, you, you remember it. You know, a small effort of prayer, prayer at all costs, even if there is little effort. That small effort is appreciated, however, it should not become an habit. You know, and we should not make it an habit where we're just giving God little and little. You know, if you're busy, you will understand, but don't allow it to become an habit. Because, you know, I think there must become a time where we graduate from that small effort into giving God that big effort, praying at all costs, giving Him the effort. 
the time, the effort that we give when we're busy, you know, I think it can come into something big. But above all else, we must pray at all costs. Even if we are busy, even if we are tired, even if we have to disappoint somebody, pray at all costs. Nevertheless, prayer should always be done. You know, in my closing, and I can testify again, when I, before I started college, I just wanted to know what college was going to be like. You know, long before I found out that I was going to, you know, be online for two years of college, I asked a few friends that were, they were already in college, or I think some of them had already graduated. And I asked them, you know, one person stood out to me, and he said to me that no matter what, pray. Even if you have an assignment, you know, that you, that you come the same night, still take the time out to pray, you know. So now I encourage the saints, pray at all costs. And those are my few words.
worship your name. In 
your word, hallelujah, that we should pray. Oh God, we don't cease in prayer. Nothing should interrupt our lifestyle of prayer. Nothing should interrupt. Oh God, Lord Jesus, our communion with you. Lord Jesus, I pray that you help us. Father, I ask that you forgive us. I pray on behalf of every saint. You see the times when we should have been praying and we were not praying. Oh God, you know the times when we were just going through the motion. Lord God, you know the times when we were just uttering words and our hearts were not in tune of mercy. Oh God, forgive us for treating lightly. Lord God, the opportunity of prayer, the privilege of prayer. Lord God, help us. Oh God, to make a commitment to renew ourselves to pray to a life of prayer. Oh God, to seek in your face, to hear it from you. And oh God, if that we seek your face, oh God, I must act upon your word, Lord Jesus Christ. Help us not to sin by not praying for our own country, not praying for the unsaved, not praying, Lord Jesus Christ, for those who are needy in the land. Help us not to sin by not praying. Oh God, Lord Jesus, the, 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 the needs of the nation are too urgent for us to be prayerless. The needs of our communities are too urgent to be prayerless. The needs in our family are too urgent to be prayerless. Our own personal needs and life is too urgent for us to be prayerless. And so, oh God, it was the storm of the throne of grace. Father, we make a new commitment to prayer, a new commitment to oh God to seek in your face, a new commitment. Oh God, to approach your throne, a new commitment, oh Jesus Christ, to be importune, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, to pray and not to grow weary. We make a new commitment. I pray for those at the altar who are praying now. There are many needs here. There are some who need healing. There are some with various problems. There are some who need financial deliverance. There are some who are being oppressed and who are depressed. There are some whose mental states, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, it's not at the place. But oh God, we come before you. Oh God, at the throne of prayer, Lord Jesus, and we pray for your mercy today. We pray for healing today. We pray for deliverance today. We pray for salvation today. We pray, Lord Jesus, for a miracle today. We pray for prosperity today. Lord God, every need that is represented here today, we put it before you. Oh God, because you are the answering God. We prayed. We have the testimony in the past that we pray that you delivered. We pray that you stop the war. We pray, Lord Jesus, and we're praying one more time. God, heal our land. We're praying, heal Jamaica. We're praying, pour out your Holy Spirit. We're praying, fill the Holy Ghost. We're praying for revival on this land. We're praying that you root out corruption. We're praying that you dismantle the gangs. We're praying for peace. We're praying for prosperity. We're praying against revenge. We're praying against injustice. We're praying, hallelujah. And we pray that you hear us. Hear us, oh God. Hear our prayer, Lord God. And respect our prayer, Jesus. But I pray for those at the altar who have never been filled with the Holy Ghost. Those in the audience who have never been filled. We're praying that your power will fall upon them. We're praying that men, women, and children, even today, oh God, we beseech you, oh God, that you baptize them with your spirit. We're praying that somebody for the first time will speak in another tongue as their spirit gives them the utterance. We're praying for somebody who's backslidden, for somebody who's backslidden in heart. We're praying for somebody who is at the periphery, somebody, oh God, who's playing a dangerous game because their life is in danger. We're praying that they will return to the fold. We're praying for new commitment. We're praying for forgiveness. We're praying for the heart of forgiveness. Help us to forgive, baptize us, oh God, with a spirit of forgiveness. I pray for somebody who's holding a grudge. I pray for somebody right now who's keeping malice. I pray for somebody right now who's angry and who's not willing to forgive. And oh God, I pray that you will heal them of their hurt. And oh Jesus, I pray that they will forgive. I pray for somebody right now who's struggling with worldly pleasures and lusts. And I pray that they will let go of this world. 
Lord. Oh God, I pray for somebody, Lord Jesus, who would be willing to give up everything to receive you, to receive your salvation. We pray, Jesus. We pray, we pray, we pray, we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We pray. Hallelujah. Oh Lord Jesus. Oh, we can't do anything else. Lord Jesus, we just pray. Lord Jesus, the first thing we want to do is just to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We pray. Hallelujah. We believe you, Jesus. We believe you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah.